Well, welcome, welcome, welcome back to another edition of More Bad News brought to you, as always, by Camel Cigarettes. Take the Camel's Challenge. Smoke Camel's for 30 days and see for yourself what a difference Camel's can make in your life. Well, my friends, it's been another week of very bad news. Uh, we've seen around us the um, you know, catastrophic effects uh, of ignoring reality. Uh, the New York Times had a uh, an article on the uh, on the on the series of, uh, of of floods that occurred in California. It turns out that there's a Mississippi River. There's a it really, it's about the same amount of water as it on in, carried by the Mississippi River, except that it's carried in the stratosphere, uh, and it goes across California, uh, and the and the Central Valley in California once was an inland ocean which dried up, could become an inland ocean again. the The amount of water that is uh, now available to be dumped in California is is catastrophic, and we've seen. The results are amazing stuff. Um, and as I said last week, th this is not something that's once in a lifetime and everybody will talk about, you know, the, you know, the winter of 2023 when all this happened. No, it's, this is the new, this is the new reality. And so uh, at the same time that uh, we're, we're being uh, um, uh, bombarded with, with uh, natural disasters from one end of the planet to the other, we are also witnessing uh, the collapse of social systems everywhere uh, and major war uh, uh, between the East and the West. Uh, and so, you know, you, it's, it's, a, it, it's a situation. Um, and what I find um, really kind of disturbing is the fact that um, Back in the day, uh, when I was worried about the resurgence of fascism after World War II, the Nazis had been destroyed and, you know, nobody's going to worry about Nazis. And I was obsessed with the resurgence of fascism. And I took comfort in the fact that all around me, people said, <laughs> you're nuts. Yeah, this is not, I don't know, whatever it is that, that you're worried about is crazy because nobody else here is worried. We're all, everything is, is really good. Things are getting better all the time. Don't you realize things are getting better all the time? They're not getting worse all the time. What's wrong with you? And uh, that's no longer the case. Now you, what you have is uh, a, a substantial uh, um a number of uh, people who agree with me that we are now um, at the at the last stages uh, of Western civilization. I said last week there was a um, uh, a, a, a new warning uh, by uh, physicists that saying that you know that considering what's going on, uh, the there's a ninety percent likelihood that our civilization is going to collapse. Well, of course, our civilization is going. To, it is collapsing. It's collapsing around us as we speak. I mean, you can see it, um, and so uh, that's the bad news. The good news is that we've got a little time left here, uh, and um, as I said also before, is that when we look into the past, we look at it from the present, so that whereas. In the past, it was always like forward looking that this was the American pageant, things were developing. But now you look at the American Revolution and it looks very different. So I wanted to pick up where uh, where I left off the last, you know, with the Lexington and Concord, you have uh, 1775, uh, violence has broken out. Um, the uh, uh, there's been significant loss of uh, of, uh, of of blood. British soldiers have been uh, assaulted directly uh, and repeatedly over the course of a day. That you know they returned to Boston, and you, you realize that now it's uh, the things have gotten out of hand. So um, 
but there's nothing that's organized around around Boston, around the city. You begin to see campfires, and so that you know the sentinels who are walking in Boston, guarding the place, are looking up into the hills, and there there are campfires everywhere in the hills, and it's not because it's hunting season. I mean, something terrible is happening, and you're kind of feeling that. However, you know Boston is impregnable. I mean, the the Continental uh, Congress decides. Uh, to send George Washington, to appoint George Washington as the general of the Continental Army. There was no Continental Army. George Washington gets on his horse and he rides up to Boston. Can you imagine this? He he arrives uh, up in the hills around Boston and uh, he's, you know, this huge guy, magnificent uniform on a beautiful white horse. And he says, I'm General Washington. I've been appointed by the Continental Congress to be the general of the Continental Army and you people of the Continental Army everybody line up, you know, and, and you know, these, it was, it was, it just, you can imagine this he, by force of character, by the fact that he looked like the part, people accepted him basically. Okay. All right. So you're the, you're, you're General Washington, you're in charge of the army and we're the army. And now what? I mean, he, could, he couldn't assault Boston. He wasn't going to be able to drive the British out, not with this ragtag group of untrained crazy people. So, um, uh, but fortunately for him, uh, uh, back up in New York State, in, in upstate New York, uh, Fort Ticonderoga, there were the Green Mountain Boys, uh, just, you know, just mountain kids. Uh, and, they, uh, and, and they thought, um, well, why don't we just go over to the fort? You know, Fort Ticonderoga had been uh, basically mothballed since 1763. There's, you know, it had been an important fort in the French and Indian War, but that was over. And so it had a skeleton crew and nothing ever happened there. Uh, and um, and these Green Mountain boys came uh, up to the to the fort. The guys in the fort thought that they were coming to to visit or something. I mean, they didn't even realize that anything was happening. They hadn't, it, CNN hadn't been invented. They didn't know what was going on. So the Green Mountain boys come up and and they're they're welcome. They oh hey come on in. You know we we're always looking for company. And they you know no 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 we're not here for company. We're here to put you people into the stock. We're taking over the fort. And um, and Fort Ticonderoga had cannon. Uh, and they, the the question was, how are you going to get the cannon from uh, from New York to Boston? Uh, and uh, they had to wait for snow. They needed. They were going to put them on sleds and drag them through the snow. It was a, it was an unbelievable story, and you know, it's a, an, an amazing adventure. But they finally got the uh, the cannon to the outskirts of Boston, and. Uh, and immediately, uh, Washington ordered them to be uh, dragged up uh, to um, uh, to the hills overlooking uh, the city. Uh, and uh, the next day, when the sun rose uh, and the British troops could see that uh, that uh, on the hills above the city, looking down on the city, were enemy guns, guns that could actually fire down on the city and made the city untenable and, uh, and, and indefensible. Um, so the, the British had to abandon Boston. It was like miraculous. The British abandoned and, you know, and the, the, the city was filled with loyalists who, you know, who said, they said, okay, you, uh, you, you can get out of here. We'll save your life, but you can't take any of your property with you. We've got to get out really quickly. And they left everything behind. And George Washington uh, triumphantly arrives in the cities. <laughs> this is like this is great. Well, this is a great start to the of the American Revolution. In the meantime, uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, who was the most uh, famous uh, American at the time, uh, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Nobody had ever heard of them. They, they were they were farmers. They were merchants. They were nobodies. Benjamin Franklin was world famous. He was, uh, he was, you know, uh, the guy who did scientific work and was a member of the uh, 
um, uh, scientific communities in, in Boston, in, in, in England and in, and in France, the Royal Society. Uh, he had charted the, the ocean currents on his many trips back and forth. Uh, he was uh, a best-selling author. His Poor Richard's Almanac was the bestseller in the colonies. Uh, next to the Bible, there was Benjamin Franklin's work. And he, and he owned and operated. He was the first franchise operator. He owned and operated almost all of the uh, of the printing presses in the colonies, and uh, which meant that the uh, the revolutionary cause had the media uh, wrapped up, uh, and uh, uh, and he had outgrown uh, the provincialism of the colonies. He was living in London, uh, and um, uh, and it was there that he really became radicalized, because uh, in England he saw that. Power in England was in the hands, solidly in the hands of the gentry. These were people who were born uh, to wealth and power and did not necessarily have uh, any kind of achievements. Whereas here was a man who was really just brilliant and achieve and, and, and on every level he was a he was a diplomat, a writer, a scientist, a, you know, a, a businessman. He was everything, um, and. Uh, and he was dealing with these people who uh, were just intolerable, uh, and uh, uh, and they looked down upon him uh, as the son of a candle maker, and you know, and the father of of uh, of, uh, of bastard sons. I mean, so uh, so in England, he was um, being given the cold shoulder, um, and um, uh, and he was becoming radicalized. Uh, by the time uh, he was forced out of England, and you know, and there were, he he would have been tried because uh, he he had uh, caused the publication of the letters of the governor of Boston, uh, Thomas Hutchinson, uh, indicating years before that you know Hutchinson had um, had thought to um, uh, uh, reduce the freedoms uh, of the colony uh, in the tensions that were going on. And the idea was just to make a scapegoat out of uh, out of Hutchinson, and instead he became a scapegoat. So Franklin flees uh, England, uh, comes back uh, in time for the Second Continental Congress. Uh, but before he actually goes, he the first thing he does when he arrives in in America is he goes to New Jersey uh, to visit with his son William. Now uh, William is the is the boy in the picture. Uh, with the kite and the string. That's William next to his father, Benjamin. Uh, 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 ben loved William and William loved Ben. They, they, you know, he was a, a, a illegitimate son, but, but Franklin, you know, acknowledged him as a son and, uh, and, um, uh, and they were partners in everything in life. Uh, Franklin took him to England where he got a law degree and, and worked on getting him the Royal Governorship of, of New Jersey, which he was very proud of. And so now Franklin has come back and, and he's gone uh, to see his son. It's very important to, to uh, uh, convince William that, look, it's, it's time now, you've got to resign this position. So uh, William, uh, was really embarrassed by his father, by this whole scandal over the Hutchinson papers. Uh, William was the go royal governor of New Jersey. This was an, an in incredible position that he had attained, he achieved with his father's help, of course. But, uh, but his father was embarrassing him and making his life extremely difficult. And, and after all, uh, it, was, it, it was absurd to think that the that this ragtag group of, of of discontents were going to be able to overthrow the mighty empire of England. It just you know, and and Franklin um, tried to convince that all night long they were drinking Madeira, which is a kind of brandy, and you can imagine they were getting pretty soused. Uh, and uh, and the the older man is this is a, the older man is the radical, and the younger man is the conservative. Uh, and so Franklin is trying to uh, um, convince his son uh, to resign his position and join the revolution. The son is trying to convince his father to to get you know get his head screwed on straight and stop this nonsense and you know and be, and and support the crown. Uh, and they part in the morning, and that that's it. I mean, they are they're really done for. Um, uh, William loses everything. Uh, he has to, he's in prison for a while in Connecticut. Then later he, uh, he lives in New York under, uh, un, under British control. And then he flees England, he flees, flees the United States and 
and goes to England. Uh, his wife has died in New York. Um, his his illegitimate son, um, a Temple Franklin, um, uh, is uh, loves his grandpa. So so he has lost his father's love and he's lost his son's love. Uh, it's a pretty tragic situation, uh, and um, uh, and uh, and it just goes to show you you should never argue with Ben Franklin. <laughs> Uh, um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, the uh, I just want to give you the impression that you know the the American Revolution was not really anything organized. Uh, it was something that happened uh, as a result of uh, of a continued deterioration of the social structure and status uh, that was uh, that was uh, um, standing. Uh, and what you can see is this you know uh, uh, constant. Um, collapse uh, taking place in the social order, uh, which is going to lead to this transformation. The other thing I want to point out is that uh, these uh, revolutionary committees um, were not elected. Uh, they, you know, at no point was this in any way a, a democratic revolution. You had about a third of the colonists were patriots uh, and supported the patriot cause. About a third of them were loyalists and supported the crown, and a third were rather you know indifferent uh politically uh at no point was there a majority uh in favor of the revolution revolutions are carried out by minorities uh of people who are determined to act um and uh and they act independent of uh, of, of larger plans this is not a, this is not putin's war in ukraine so uh, I'll leave it there uh, and um, have a good week. Uh, I, I think I'm going to also be posting this week uh, my uh, introduction to my Corbono uh, seminar. I don't know whether we'll have a second one uh, because nobody really, the two people registered for it. Uh, and and it's, it's the kind of thing where I'm not sure anybody's going to be interested in it, but yeah, it, would, you know, it doesn't cost anything. You know, so it's going to be there if you're interested in taking a look at it. Uh, I'll see you next week. Have a good week. Uh, and um, uh, and remember, uh, smoke camels. Give them a try. Smoke them for 30 days. You won't go wrong. <laughs>